Welcome back, Pro Guides family. My name is Dan, and today we're going to be talking about probably the most influential weapon currently in the game, the Operator. But before we dive into what makes the Operator such a terror, you know what time it is. It's time for the question of the day. Today's question is, do you think the Operator needs a nerf? We've seen time and time again that the gun can shut down lines of sight so effectively, but it does have some downsides. With the rise of players like Wardell, who seem to solo carry games with the Operator in hand, there's definitely an argument to be made for changes to the weapon. Don't forget to leave your answer to the question of the day in the comments down below. And with that out of the way, let's dive into what makes the Operator tick. Whenever you're talking about a weapon in Valorant, it's always important to start with the stats, and the Operator is no different. Being a bolt-action rifle, the Operator has a relatively slow fire rate of only 0.75 rounds per second, but makes up for this lack of speed with the highest base damage per shot in the game, clocking in at 255 damage per headshot, 150 damage per body shot, and 127 damage per leg shot anywhere within 50 meters. To put that into context, if you're wearing light shields and you get hit with an Operator anywhere on your body, you can enjoy spectating your teammates for the rest of the round. With heavy shields, the only way to survive an op shot is if you get hit in the legs, and even then, you're going to be left pretty badly damaged, so you better hope your sage is nearby. With also the best optics in the game, with a 2.5x and 5x variable zoom, the op can both deal with shorter and longer range opponents, depending on what the situation requires. Scoping in with the weapon also significantly increases its accuracy and makes it a true sniper. Unlike the Marshall, the Operator has horrible unscoped accuracy, actually the worst in the game. Even standing still or crouching while no scoping is not recommended unless you have other options and really need that jet to get out of your face. With only 5 bullets in the magazine and 10 shots in reserve, the Operator doesn't give much room for error in shots, so spamming corners with this weapon is not recommended, even with its high wall penetration. With the weapon clocking in at 4,500 credits, it is certainly not a weapon you will be able to buy many rounds in a row, so if you choose to purchase one, make sure that your team is on a buy round and understand where your economy will be if you do die and lose the weapon. As we have seen so far, the AWP is a precision weapon designed for those who can master its slow rate of fire but amazing accuracy. In order to look at what makes the op so good, we're going to have to take a trip down memory lane and back to the game that inspired Valorant, CSGO. In CSGO, there's a weapon similar to the Operator called the AWP. It's a bolt-action sniper that has horrible unscoped accuracy, slow rate of fire, but can one-shot armored opponents to the chest or unarmored opponents anywhere. Its cost is also pretty close to the Operator's at $4,750. The AWP is still a frightening weapon to face in CSGO, and while it still does a great job at holding down angles and preventing pushes, why is it not the same terror to face as its cousin in Valorant? Simply put, it doesn't actually have anything to do with the stats of the Operator or AWP themselves. Rather, the tools available to the players in both games to deal with this one-shot sniper are vastly different. Taking a look at CSGO, we see that there are actually no agents with abilities. Instead, every player can buy a set amount of utility every round. Each player can hold up to four pieces of utility with access to only one smoke per player and up to two flashbangs per player. If we assume that every player on the team buys one smoke and two flashbangs on a buy round, we see that the team has access to five smokes and ten flashes per round. Compare that to Valorant where you might have one controller agent with anywhere between one and three smokes and maybe one or two agents with flashes, equating to maybe two or three flashes per round. It also doesn't help that if you're playing an agent like Jet or Cypher, their smokes aren't really designed for being able to block off an opper's line of sight as Jet will most likely have to expose herself briefly to get a smoke off, giving the opper holding an angle a chance to kill her. With Cypher, it's very difficult to get his smokes far enough to actually block off an opper, and his smokes are really only useful if you need to cross an angle being held by an op, not if you need to push into the angle that the opper is holding. Even Viper with her poison orb struggles to place smokes deep into long angles that an op is normally posted at. That really just leaves Brimstone and Omen as the two agents that can really smoke an opper off an angle. Brimstone can also struggle at points because of how limited his range to place smokes can be, so in some situations it might be hard to get your team's Brimstone in a position to put down the smokes they need in order to just simply suppress the opera for a short time. Flashes are another way to try and get an op to move off an angle, but that comes with its own downsides. Flashes tend to clear up very quickly, allowing the player with the op to just duck behind cover for a second or two while waiting for the flash to clear, and then immediately re-peeking and taking your sage's head off. Like smokes, flashes can be a good tool if you need to cross an angle being held by an op, but struggle to actually force an opper to reposition and fight from a new angle. 
Compared to CSGO, where literally any player can learn a simple smoke grenade lineup that completely blocks vision for an AWP, and the sheer amount of flashes that can be committed to blind a player using the AWP for a substantial amount of time, allowing for the attackers to take control of a state before the AWPer gains their vision back. As we just discussed, with the current state of utility in Valorant, there isn't much you can do on that side, so what about looking at the other potential answers to an AWP other than utility? Obviously, the best way to get an op out of the enemy's hands is to pick up an op of your own and try to out-aim the enemy. However, most of the time when an op is most effective is actually on defense, and that has to do with the speed that defenders can get to important angles and cover them with an op before the attackers manage to get to the same angle. So if you do opt to pick up an op on attack to try and counter another opper on defense, you are already starting out at a disadvantage, as now you have to peek into the enemy who is already posted and is most likely watching the angle. Mobility is another option available to try and aggress towards an opera. Using Raze's Blast Packs or Jet's Tailwind might be able to give you some level of success at avoiding an opera's first shot. But at the same time, these are not a foolproof way for getting around an op, as if the player is good, they will be able to flick onto you in a second, and suddenly you went from feeling like you had a chance back down to the op is OP. In the current state of the game, it is very difficult to deal with a good opper, and these results even show in professional play. If you have been watching tournaments recently, you might know about the team TSM that took first place over T1 in T1X Nerd Street Gamers Ignition Series tournaments a few weeks ago. While all of the members of TSM definitely deserve their spot, there was one player in particular that drew a lot of community attention, and that is none other than TSM's main opper, Wardell. While it was obvious that he is a magician with the op and rifle alike, there's definitely something to be said about the fact that not only did Wardell top frag in the final match against T1 in the Grand Finals, but he was routinely topping the scoreboard in almost every match against all teams. There's obviously something to be said about his individual skill alone, but it's interesting to see that the player that is top fragging all these matches is the one who decides to use the most expensive and slowest weapon in the game. Another part of it can be attributed to his very aggressive style of opping. Where most other oppers tend to hold corners and wait for people to cross into their line of sight, Wardell takes the initiative to peek into angles as a defender and get those initial picks that really open up rounds for TSM. If you're having trouble dealing with oppers in your game, then be sure to check out ProGuys.com. We're offering on-demand coaching from some of the best Valorant players in the world. Whether you can't seem to get around that pesky jet with an op or feel like you could use some guidance in your decision making or anywhere in between, our coaches are here to help. Check the link in the description down below to learn more. So by now, I think our opinion on the op is clear. It needs a change, but we are not the ones to call something broken and not offer some potential solutions to fix it. As it stands right now, I think the price for the op is in a good place. While some will definitely argue that the best way to curb the power of the op is to just jack up its price and make it harder to get multiples of them out, I think that is the equivalent of putting a band-aid on a severed limb. Sure, you may be able to go a bit longer without a proper fix, but you aren't addressing the root cause of the problems with the weapon. In the same vein, limiting each team to only one op per side or implementing any sort of weapon restriction sets a bad example for the rest of the game and could lead to more problems down the road. Look at what happened when Blizzard implemented roll lock into their game and forced every team to run two DPS, two tank, and two supports. People lost that creativity in finding new and exciting combos and arguably led to the current state of Overwatch and its professional scene. No, instead, let's focus on the potential changes to utility that Riot could make to help curve the op's power without directly affecting its stats. Adding more agents to the game like Omen that can smoke multiple times per round and don't need to be within spinning distance of the enemy to do so would be a great start. There's a lot of balancing work that would need to go into making sure the character isn't broken, but maybe making the smoke a projectile you have to line up in order to get it to where you want is a good way to help curb that agent's power. Alternatively, they could also make flashes stronger at longer distances. As it stands currently, it can be pretty easy to turn away from flashes and reduce or even straight up negate their effects. Especially since most players using an op like to stand near corners so they can retreat back to safety if they start getting pushed too hard, flashes tend to be a lot harder to land effectively on an op. Increasing the power of flashes across the game as a whole would help bring down the op a notch, but that could also potentially make flashes too overpowered in other situations. However, it is a potential route Riot might explore. If Riot just wants to hit the op where it hurts in its stats, then I would actually drop the rate of fire even more. I would say maybe 0.5 or 0.45 shots per second would help letting people get closer to an op without immediately getting picked off. It would also get oppers to play a bit more defensively and think twice about peeking a short angle into two enemies because now they will have to wait a lot longer for their gun to reset, giving the other team a better window to respond to the op by either getting aggressive or making the call to fall back. 
Nerfing the op's movement speed is another change that might make oppers play a bit more defensively and give anyone holding an angle that an opper might peek into a bit more of an advantage since the player using the op will be moving slower so they will have less time to react. Only time will tell how Riot will decide to change the op, but who knows, we could be seeing some op nerfs coming as soon as the next patch. Well guys, that is all we have for you today. If you liked the video, please be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you really liked the video, maybe even consider subscribing. We post new videos just like this one daily, and you definitely don't want to miss out. Don't forget to check out ProGuides.com either to get access to some of the best coaching available. Until next time, be sure to stay safe out there. Peace out.